Operations with functions. Combining functions using arithmetic operators is very straightforward. Here's how to represent the operations using function notation. In our example, we're letting f of x be equal to x squared and g of x being equal to the absolute value of x. We're going to write the sum, difference, product, and quotient of f with g. For the sum, we have f plus g of x. That means we're taking f of x plus g of x. So we're taking f of x, which is x squared, and we're substituting it in for f of x to get x squared, plus g of x is the absolute value of x substituted in there. So the final function for f plus g of x is x squared plus the absolute value of x. For difference, it's also very straightforward. f minus g of x is equal to f of x minus g of x, which is equal to x squared minus the absolute value of x. Product is also straightforward. It's f of x times g of x, so x squared times the absolute value of x. And for quotient, we have f divided by g of x, which is equal to f of x divided by g of x, which is equal to, in our case, x squared divided by x. And it's worth noting there are no surprises when combining two or more functions. The notation for each operation is very clear and unambiguous. Let's try an example where we are combining functions and evaluating them. Let f of x be equal to the square root of x and g of x be equal to 2x plus 1. Evaluate the expression f plus g of 9. Well, that means that we're taking f of 9 and we're adding g of 9 to it. So when we take the square root of 9, that ends up being 3, plus 2 times 9, which is 18, plus 1 more is 19. And when we add these two values together, we get 22. Now let's look at part B, f minus g of 4. That means we are taking f of 4 and subtracting g of 4 from it. So f of 4, the square root of 4, is 2. And then we're subtracting 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 more is 9. And when we do 2 minus 9, we end up getting negative 7. Now let's do f times g of 16. So that's f of 16 times g of 16. So f of 16 will be 4, and we are multiplying that by 2 times 16, which is 32, plus 1 more is 33. And when we multiply 4 and 33 together, we get 132. And now our last problem f divided by g of 1. That's f of 1 divided by g of 1. So f of 1, the square root of 1, which is 1. And then g of 1, that'll be 2 times 1 plus 1. That'll be 2 plus 1 is 3. So we end up getting 1 third. And we can simplify. We cannot simplify any further making one-third the final answer. Here are the solutions to this example problem, and all of them match the solutions that we found when we worked them out. Now let's talk about combining functions with constants and coefficients. Constant coefficients can be added to the mix. Here's how to represent the operations using function notation. We'll do this with an example. Let f of x be equal to x squared and g of x be equal to the absolute value of x. Write equivalent formulas without using f and g. So for sum, we have 2 times f plus 3 times g of x. That means that we are finding 2 times f of x plus 3 times g of x. So now let's actually substitute f of x and g of x into their locations. So we have 2 times f of x is x squared plus 3 times g of x is the absolute value of x. And that's our final answer. Now let's look at the difference. We have 4 times f minus 7 times g of x. That means we're taking 4 times f of x, and we're subtracting 7 times g of x from it. So that's going to be 4x squared minus 7 times the absolute value of x. And that's our final answer. It cannot be simplified further. Now let's look at the product. We have 5 times f times 2 times g of x. 
So that's going to be 5 times f of x times 2 times g of x. So that's going to be 5x squared times 2 times the absolute value of x. Now we can multiply our coefficients together to get 10, and then we have x squared times the absolute value of x. Now let's look at the last problem. We have 6f divided by g of x. That's going to be 6 times f of x divided by g of x. So that's going to be 6x squared divided by the absolute value of x. And that's our final answer. Again, there are no surprises when combining two or more functions. The notation is clear and unambiguous. And here are the answers to these four example problems that demonstrate each operation, and they do match the solutions that we found when we worked them out. Let's try an example of combining functions while also evaluating. We're going to let f of x be equal to 1 minus 2x and let g of x be given by the graph. Evaluate each expression, f plus 3g of negative 1. That means we're finding f of negative 1 and we're adding 3 times g of negative 1 to it. So if we substitute negative 1 in for x, we'll have 1 plus 2, which is 3. Plus, if we evaluate g at negative 1, it's at 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. And when we add these two values together, we end up getting 9. Now let's look at f minus g of 3. That's going to be f of 3 minus g of 3. So f of 3, if we substitute 3 in, we have 1 minus 2 times 3, or 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. And we're subtracting g of 3, and g of 3 is right here at 0. So negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5. Now let's look at question C, 2f times g of 4. So that means we're doing 2 times f of 4, and we're multiplying that by g of 4. So we have f of 4, 1 minus 2 times 4, or 1 minus 8, which is negative 7, and 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And then we're multiplying that by g of 4, which is 4 and a half. And when we multiply these two values together, we will end up getting negative 63. And now for the last problem, g of, I'm sorry, g divided by f of 2. That means we're going to do g of 2 divided by f of 2. So g of 2 is negative 1, and we're dividing that by f of 2. That'll be 1 minus 2 times 2, or 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And then negative 1 divided by negative 3 is positive one-third. And here are the solutions, and they do match each and every solution that we found when we worked out the problems.